Okay, so let's let's jump in and begin. So um, I'm recording again, so I'll have this the, this lecture will be uploaded if, just like all the others, um, either this afternoon or tomorrow. So um, we're going to do two things today. Uh, one is that we're going to go over real quick the assignment for week number six, uh, which is going to be due this Sunday. Uh, it is another HTML and CSS construct. Um, if you were it should be about on par with the with the school information page, probably even a little simpler. Uh, hopefully, since you've done a few now, uh, but we'll go over what those are supposed to look like and answer any questions on that. And then, secondly, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to do my implementation of the week five, the school comparison page. So, I have a um, I'm just going to go through that in class how I solved that solution, how I solved that problem, um, and then present my solution so that if you if you got stuck or you had questions on your while you're doing your own assignment, then you can um, uh, then you can explore what's going on there. Uh, starting next week, we're going to start jumping into JavaScript, uh, which will be very exciting. So, um, stay tuned. All right. So, on week six, um, have you guys noticed these kiosks that are in the hallways around those little, you know, silver-looking kiosks there? So, those are all just uh, um, they're just kiosks that allow you to access the um, the Alamo College's web page. So, your assignment is to implement two. What pages that are that I just took pictures of from that kiosk? So the first one is the main menu, and if you click here, you'll be able to download an, an image of what I want the your HTML and CSS to look like. Okay, so the first one is the main menu, and then is the semester dates. Okay, so we can look at uh, this is the main menu. Okay, so if we look at this, you'll notice that, and if you go and look at these at these kiosks, and if you look at this picture, you'll, you'll notice a few things. One is there's a background image here. On the body, okay. Some of this, some of these, these little, this little uh, glowing part right here, that's probably just a glare from my picture. And then you can kind of see me if you look really close. You can see me a little bit in the picture. So obviously you don't have to. I don't have to be in your background image, okay. But notice that there's a um, each of these buttons has a little bit of gradient on it. See how it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. So that's a that's a, a linear gradient that's to bottom and it's from some red to some maroonish blackish color. Okay, so you can you can explore uh, that. Notice the, the, the all the buttons are the same size. The text inside it is all the same font. It's all uppercase. It's all centered vertically and horizontally um, in the button. The the buttons have rounded corners. Okay, so there's some detail here. It's important when you implement these things that you pay it, that you look at the detail of what you're implementing. Okay, because it all matters. A designer or someone has has gone through the trouble of putting this together. The customer has said this is what they want. You need to you need to produce that. Okay, you don't want to be making cosmetic changes to these unless unless it's part of your of your specification. Okay, so be careful and be a, and pay attention to the detail as you go. I don't know where this this image on the back comes from. I'm, it's it's a it's going to be a background image on the body, okay? Either on the body or there's going to be a div that's that's the first child of the body that has that background image. But that's going to be a, a background image um, in CSS, not an image tag in HTML, okay? So this so this image in the background, and I don't know where that image file comes from. Um, you could poke around, I guess, and try to find something. If you can't find that one in particular, um, then just something that's um, a, a reasonable um, a reasonable substitute for that background image. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Pay attention to the details as you do it. Okay. See, so, yeah, and I made a little note here. Note the background image and the gradient background on the buttons and the rounded corners also. Okay. So the other one is semester dates. So that one looks like this. So this is pretty straightforward. This is just a a table. Okay. And if you if you look at the kiosk and you go to this option, um, I think this option is um, here in course schedule. I think is where is or academic calendar. One of those. If you click on one of these, you'll get a page that looks something like this. On the kiosk itself, there is a lot more to this page than just this one table. There's several tables on that page. You don't need to do them all. You just need to do this one. Okay. You can kind of see here at the top how this looks like it's. There's a, a more cells of this table and more rows up above. You don't have to worry about that. You can just produce a single table on the screen. Okay, but notice a couple of things here, like this column at the top. This is in the table, 
or this row at the top is in the table, right? Because it's got a border around it, just like the rest of the table, but it spans across the entire table. Okay, so you're gonna need the call span setting on that. It's got bolder text and bigger. You've got a different background on these six or these five cells than you do on the rest of the table. You've got a different background on this on this leftmost column. Again, the glare here, you don't need to implement that. Um, that's just glare from me taking the picture of a screen. Okay? So, and there's a little bit of a menu here on this one. This menu, if you were to click it, you'd get a little drop down. You don't have to worry about actually implementing a drop down menu unless you're just feeling like an overachiever. Just get the get the menu bar at the top with a little bit of a, the Alamo College's logo, which you can rip straight off alamocolleges.edu if you want to figure out what kind of background color this is. Now, none of these have to be functional, okay? You don't have, if I were to come up here on your implementation and click the menu button, I don't really expect anything to happen, okay? On the kiosk, you would click that menu button, you would get some more options. On your implementation, I just want a visual representation of this HTML and CSS, okay? And the same on the, uh, and the same on the buttons here. You don't have to, each of these is a link on the, on the kiosk, but you don't, if on your implementation, you don't have to implement a, a click on that. If you want to, knock yourself out, okay? But what I'm really after here is just the, the, the structure of the HTML and the presentation of the CSS that goes with it. Okay? Any questions? It's due Sunday at 11.59 p.m. All right? All right. Okay. So what we're going to do for the rest of class is, uh, is I'm going to do my CSS implementation of the school comparison page. Okay? Now, most of you have submitted an assignment for this, and then they look reasonably good. Where did you guys have any trouble with this? Where did you struggle or run into 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 a roadblock here? Uh, I had problems with the parent containers. Okay. And um, how I was implementing some CSS like uh, alignment and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I was just roadblocking myself. Yeah. Alignment is tricky. Alignment is is complicated in in CSS, and so it, it takes some practice getting used to. We'll cover the, and the thing about parent containers is to making sure that you have a parent container around every section of the, um, every section of the content. So we'll, we'll look at how I structured my HTML, and you'll, hopefully you'll get some feel for that. I also encourage you, there are other containers that are, that are in the book. They have asides and sections and articles that are defined in the book. Those are what, we, what are known as semantic containers in that they provide a little bit of context to what you expect this section to be or this container to be. If it's an aside, you know, I'm, I expect it to be maybe a sidebar on the, um, uh, on the page. Or if it's a section or an article, then maybe you expect it to be to look like a, like a newspaper or a blog roll or something like that, and, and you're using those. And so, so those are semantic containers. They structurally and, and, and behaviorally, they don't really do anything different than a div container. A div container is just has no semantic meaning, right? It just is a container that you have to figure out what, what it what it means. So when to when you use one of those, a side or, or article or section versus a div is up to you. I tend to use um, unless I have a repeating structure like a blog roll on the page, I tend to only I stick with the divs and I just focus everything on on the div containers. It is worth noting that some of the older browsers you know, getting back into IE seven and nine and some of those, which you will occasionally run into in in a in a in, in a production app on the internet. Thankfully, they're getting much more infrequent, but they're still out there. They do not recognize those newer semantic containers. So, anything from Internet from Internet Explorer eleven and Chrome and Safari on, the modern browsers are going to recognize those, but. Um, just know that um, um, when you use those parent containers, that, that a div tag will generally get you everywhere you need to go. Um, but it can occasionally make your code a little hard to read. Any, anybody else have struggle with anything? Um, I actually struggled with trying to get the tables right. Like okay. Position them how I wanted them. Okay. Kind of like the squares. Okay. Yeah, so tables are tricky because there are three elements in there. There's the table, there's the table row, and then there's the table data. Or the table cell, and then you have, then you have the header and the footer section, and you could have a th or a tr, or a th or a td rather for the so. So there's a lot of tags that make up a table. So you have to be, you have to be a little more deliberate about your CSS. 
And then there's just a lot of attributes that you can that you can attach. So we'll cover we'll cover a few of those. There was a one of the CSS one of the videos on CSS that I linked um, in the Canvas module was how to style tables. So if you look at that, it had some it had some some good points um, about how to do that. Also, if you look at the W3 page for CSS for tables. There's some great examples of, of how all the attributes are implemented there, and some good tutorials and um, there as well. Okay, any other questions? All right, so uh, the standard for the class, the grading policy for the class is you have 14 days from the due date to submit something. So if you want to make an update to what you submitted or you haven't submitted yet, then you have 14 days from the original due date to do that um, for a 20% penalty. Okay, so if you haven't gotten yours in yet or you want to make an update, please do so. Um, as soon as you can. Okay, so I'm going to implement this. So um, we started, we, we, we did the HTML a couple of weeks ago, so we, we had that to start with. We probably had to make pretty significant changes to that um, as we were implementing our CSS. Um, and then we have this link here, which is the example of what we're looking for, which um, should look like, like this. So this is mine. This is not particularly pretty, okay? But it's but I have I have addressed every element on the screen with some kind of CSS, okay? And so if we look at what we're about to build here in my in my header section, okay, I've got I've got a little image over here, and I've got a background, and a little bit of a box, a little bit of a border around that, and I've got a, a horizontal menu here. I have this element here, which is looks like a banner image. I've got two school panels here, one on the right, one on one on the left, one on the right. And they are the same. They both have a bit of a gradient background, a top to bottom gradient. Okay, and then I've styled the tables here. I've made the, I've given the border, the the background rather of this table, is a little darker than what's around it. I've made the, I've made it bold. I've gotten rid of the internal lines. Here I've put a box around my, uh, a border around my 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 ordered list here, and I've changed my ordered list to Roman numerals. Okay. Here I'm, I have another gradient in my form, and I've put the form side by side instead of instead of blocked. I've got rounded edges on my button. I've got a background here on my footer, and I've centered my um, my my images. Okay, so I've done something to every element on the page here. Okay, so we're going to implement. We're going to take my code and implement this. Okay, and uh, and see where it goes. Now, in doing this, I have not actually worked through this. Since I since last year when I did this example in the class I taught previously, okay. So today I'm going to start from scratch with an empty page with with this, with HTML with no class designations and an empty CSS, and we're going to run through it. I have some notes that will help me along with that, but I'm starting raw and kind of from scratch here, without a prepared script for a reason. One is that I want you to see the process that I'm going to follow to go through this and the steps that I take to figure out the problem as I'm going, okay. Also, you'll see me get stuck often, okay? For something I'm trying to do, I'm struggling with figuring, with figuring out exactly which selector I'm at, and you'll see me work through the process of, of getting unstuck, okay? That is a very intentional step on my part, because I want you to see the process for how somebody that, that does this regularly goes through the process of doing it, okay? So I think it's important to see the process of, of developing the CSS and the HTML, the process of solving the problem, as much as just knowing how, how the tags work and so forth, okay? All right, so let's jump in. So um, I'm using Visual Studio, Visual Studio code here. So I've already got a little bit of starting of starting point here, okay? So I have, um, uh, do we need to turn the lights off for the projector? Okay, how's that? Can you guys read that? Okay, so um, I'm starting here in Visual Studio Code, VS Code. So I already have my HTML here. So this is what I've made, and I've gone, and, I've, and we'll run through it real quick, but I've been very careful. I've declared my body. I've, I have a title in my head section. I have, in each heading section, I have the header, the banner, the content with the school box one and the school box two, okay? And I've got parent containers, parent divs around all of those. Okay, and I've got my indentation clean, and I put in a few comments in there so that it's going to help me as I go through to apply CSS that I can I can find what I want. So I've done 
So as in building my, my raw HTML, I've been very deliberate about, about keeping it clean so that when I come back to start styling it, I, I know what I have. Now, if I were starting this from scratch, I probably would be doing them both at the same time. I wouldn't do the entire HTML. I would do it in pieces. I would probably just do the heading section of the HTML and then do the banner and then do the, 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 school, the school panel. So I would probably be building those HTML and CSS for each section as I go. Um, but we already have the HTML built here. Okay. Notice also that I have in my, in my project folder, so I'm working here in week five, the school info page. And so I have a CSS folder here, and I have this images folder. Those are subfolders in my, in my school information page project folder. My, my school information page HTML sits in the root of that, of that school info page folder. And then I have a CSS and an images fold, uh, folder that are underneath that. Okay? So that's where, so I'm keeping my images here in this images folder. I'm going to put my CSS in the CSS folder. So notice when I go to, to link to an image, okay, this is me linking to an image. Let's go ahead and load that up in the browser first. So I'm just going to copy the path. That was a right click. I'm going to copy the path. I'm going to paste it in here to my tab. Okay. So notice here I have this image. Here's the Baylor image. Here's my banner. Here's the UT logo. Okay. When I'm referencing that, I'm actually giving it a, a, um, a relative URL, okay? Because in the HTML, to get to, to this image, Baylor.png, that is in the images folder slash UT Austin or Baylor, um, Baylor.gif, okay? Oh, I have two Baylor pictures, okay? So I'm not using all of these images. Um, some of them were there from, for other, other parts of the project that we'll get to later. As we work on, okay. But notice, but I'm using that relative, that relative uh, path for those images because I'm storing them in a folder here, and that just helps me to, if I have multiple files or multiple images, it just makes my folder structure, my project structure, a little cleaner, okay. As I go, okay. Um, so I'm going to do the same with the CSS. I'm going to put my CSS in a subfolder, okay. So the first thing I want to do, okay, is just get my CSS attached to the page. So I'm going to have to put a link here. And because I'm extraordinarily lazy, I'm just going to copy a link from one of my other projects and then come back to my school information page and just paste it in. Okay? And then I just have to fix my, um, my path. So this is going to be school information page.css. Okay? Make sure I spell that right. And then I can come here, I can right click and create a new file. And I need to make sure that I spell it correctly, so that I use same similar capitalization between the two. Okay, so now I should be linked. Okay, school information page CSS with my style sheet. I just hit Command S to save that here, and then in VS Code, I'm going to go ahead and split this screen so that I can see them both at the same time. So that way, I can work on my CSS um, and see my HTML as I go. Okay, um, only I want them to be. Um, in different, I want the HTML on the right side because I'm going to spend most of my time working here on the CSS. So I'm going to put the HTML on the right just because it's more comfortable for me. Okay. So first thing I want to do is is make sure that I've got my CSS working. Okay, and that it's attached right. So the first thing I'm going to do is just um, turn the background color of the body red. Um, I'm just going to save that, and that's just to make sure that I've actually got the CSS attached. Okay, to the HTML. Okay, so that's me just doing a little debug on that on that link that I applied. Okay, so obviously I'm not going to keep that, but I know that my CSS is properly attached. Okay, so now we're just going to work. Um, we're just going to work down the through the through the project. So the first thing I'm, I want to do is get this header section. Okay, so let's look at the HTML for this. But the first thing I'm going to do is is just style this one header section. Okay, we see in our raw HTML that it's still this ugly red color, but we see this is the, I've got my, my logo here and I've got my menu here, okay? So first things first, let's just put a background on that, on that, on that header section and then let's make it horizontal, okay? So that the two containers are side by side. If you look here in the heading section, we see that I have a div here. And when I highlight, when I put my cursor on that div, it highlights the, the, the matching end of that div. 
So I'm just going to start decorating these with a class. I'm just going to say this class is called heading. I'm going to come here, and this class is going to be called logo. And then here, inside this, this class is going to be called mini. Okay, I save that. And then I'm just going to come in here, I'm going to say heading with the class. So I use a period selector. I'm going to say the background color. Now I want the background color to match the background of this image. Okay. Now on, on a Mac, you can use um, a tool called the digital color meter. Okay. Where I can highlight over that. And I put my cursor on that and it tells me what the RGB values are. Okay. So the RGB values there are 85, 134, um, 193. Okay. So then I just make, make a note of that. Then I can come to my, to my color page, color-hex.com. I can see, okay, what do I want my colors to be? RGB, and I can just type in those colors, 85, 134, 193, okay? And we see this is that color. This, These are the RGB values, 85, 134, 193. These are the hex values, okay? So I can use color hex here to get, to, to figure out what, to, to pull out those RGB values from, the, from that image using my digital color meter, and then, um, get the, the corresponding RGB and hex values. I can also look at there are other shades and tints of that color. So if I want to build a color palette, I can I can have I can get slightly darker shades of that. I can get lighter tints of that as I go. Okay. And then there's also some other um, some other complementary colors that you can go. So this color hex tool is really great if you're trying to build a, a color palette for your um, for your page. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put my background color on that. So I go back to my code. Now I can do the color value here in a couple of different ways. I can say 85, 134, 193. I can just type that in. I can save that. And then when I go back to, to my school information page, okay, we see that it's there. And I didn't quite catch that exactly right on my on my page, on my, my digital color meters off of just a shade. Okay. But we can, um, we, we can keep going. So I've got my background color there. Alternatively, I could put in a different color here. If I didn't want to use the RGB, I could put in the hex value, which if we look at the hex value, we can see that it's 5586C1. So I come in here and put 5586C1 using the hex value then that's the same color as the RGB that I use. So if I refresh my page, it's refreshed, it doesn't change, because that RGB and the hex value are the same color. Okay. All right, so, so that's my background color. Next thing is let's, let's put this, this menu container, let's put it um, horizontal to the logo. Okay. So I can come in here and I can say, um, so I can say I want my logo, so I'm using the, the, the class selector, period logo, comma, period menu. So it means I want this, these, I want these, the CSS to apply to either of those, so logo or menu, which any element that has that class. And I'm just going to make them inline block, okay? Which now they should be side by side, okay? So next I will, I will spread my, uh, my UL here. I'll make it um, uh, horizontal instead of uh, instead of, of vertical okay so the simplest way to do that is to say um, in the menu class I want the unordered list to um, whoops in the menu class I want the li's in the menu class to be display inline block okay so now they're horizontal okay notice also when I make them in inline block that my my marker went away okay that's gone, right? Automatically, I could have I could have done a, a list display here, so I can do menu on my unordered list, and I want my uh, list style to be none. Okay, that would also that also make sure that that the that the markers are gone. Okay, so now I want this this container to be on the right side, so I don't want it here on on this. I want it to be over here on on this right side. So I'm just going to say um, on my unordered list, on my menu block, 
I'm just going to float that to the right. Okay, now it's on the right. Okay, I want to put a little bit of space in between. Um, we'll put a little bit of space in between these these elements. Okay, so how what do you think I'm going to use to do that? How do I get space in between those those the home and the about me and the Google? Padding? It's padding. It's going to be padding, and it's going to be on which element? So if I if I look at these, if I do an inspection on these, I see those are the LIs. So if I'm if I'm down on the inspection on the Dev Tools, I'm hovering over the LI and it's highlighting up on top. You can see up to the top right where it's highlighting the home, so I can see. So I need padding on the LIs, right? So I come in here and I could test that and say, if I just put padding on the right here of 30 pixels, what do I get? Okay, I don't get anything. Oh, I misspelled it, padding dash right. Okay, so I need, I need right padding on those, okay, which is gonna put a little space on the right side of the element. So then if I, if I hover over this again, we can see that I've got some padding. You can't really tell on the projector, but it, you can see that it's highlighted in, in kind of that greenish color. So that is on the, the that's padding on the right side of that element. So if I just to put some padding on on the right for all these LIs, I can just put that in this selector, padding dash right, and let's just do 25 pixels and see how that works. Okay, save that. Okay, and so now my my Elements there are are spread out a little bit. Okay, my my menu options. Okay. Notice also one thing. I don't know if you noticed there, but I have the Dev Tools open, the Inspection panel here, open on Chrome. And so when I go in and make changes here, okay. So if I come here, we see that we see the padding here is about 25. I'm going to come in here in my code and I'm going to make that 50. So that's going to be a lot bigger. I'm going to hit Command S. To save this and notice that it comes when I come back to my page, it's automatically refreshed. Okay, because I have the Dev Tools open on this page, I don't have to refresh it for it for Chrome to bring in changes to my to my HTML or CSS. It's just happening automatically uh, because and that's just a an extra feature that I get from Dev Tools. Okay, if I were to to close that down now, when I come back here and I change my code, save that. I come back here, I actually have to hit the refresh button. So I did command R there to, to refresh. Okay. So just um, be aware of that. It can be that can be very helpful. Um, occasionally it can be a little surprising if you're not expecting those the page to change automatically. Okay. Notice also here that I've got my um, my links are underlined and they're a different color. Okay, so here that's just the default blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and style those links. Yes, sir. What, what made the logo separate? From what made the logo separate from what made the logo separate was when I there's a there's a div here, so if you look at the at the inspection there. Because on mine, like I got them to be side by side, but they were like right next to each other. Right. So that and that was the default here. So when I had in my heading, so we can see that my heading is is highlighting the entire banner or the entire section at the top. I have my logo div, which is really just the image, okay, and that's all it's got. And then I've got the menu div, which is on the side. So what made them separate was when I applied to the menu, um, to the menu class, I applied this float right, okay. That's what made them separate, okay. And so that and that's just going to float. It floats all the way to the right side of the screen, okay. So, you know however right it's going to be. And then if it doesn't fit all on one side, it just floats down. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to change the, the, the font color um, of these, of these, uh, of these links. So I can come in here and I can say um, in the menu, I want all of my links, all of my link tags. I want the font color. Oops. I want the color. Um, and I have a little cheat sheet here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use um, the color is 
on my cheat sheet, but I can't find it now. It is... I'm sorry. So that is a color, it's this one, D9, 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 and that's just kind of a little grayish color. Oops. Sorry about that. So I come back here and refresh it, and so now we see that my my links are no longer that bluish color. They're they're kind of this gray. And then what I want to do is if I come to color hex here, and I do um, and I look at D9, 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 and I want to pick up a, a color that's a little darker because when I hover, what I want to happen is I want to hover over my um, my links, okay? So I could pick one of these, these these darker colors. So what I want to happen is when I hover over it, I want it to like pop out a little bit and maybe turn a slightly darker shade, so that I can see that I'm so it just has some some indication that it's clickable, okay? So there I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the hover attribute. And I'm going to say color, and I'm just going to I could pick one of those shades off of um, I can pick one of those shades off of of um, um, color hex, or I'm just going to use this one, 517A83. Is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. That one is. Sorry again. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I wanted. 517A83. Okay. So that's the color I'm going to use. So now when I. Um, when I come back and hover over those, notice they turn a slightly different shade. That's not a particularly good hover color because it kind of disappears into the background, right? So let's go back to color hex and let's just pick a, a darker shade here. So we have we're here at D9D9 is what we is what our text was. So let's just pick this one, maybe three shades, three shades in. So that's going to be 97, 97, 97 on the hex code. Okay. So I can say 97, 97, 97. So then when I come back here to my school information page and I refresh, now it's it's covering it just a little darker. And that gives me a little, it's good to give some kind of indication. When I hover over the link, two things happen. One is the cursor automatically changes to the pointer. But I also get a little bit of a of an indication on the page that, hey, this is an active, an active element that's clickable. Okay. Now I haven't actually implemented a target for any of these, so if I were to click on them, nothing's gonna happen. Okay. All right, so that's so that should do it for the border, or or for the um, for the the header. Okay, if we go back to our to our sample, uh, it seems to have a little bit of a border around it, maybe it's something darker blue. So let's go ahead and add that. So that's just here on the um, on the heading. I can just add a border. And I'm just going to make that one pixel solid, and I'm just going to use this color, um, forty seven. 6B, 8B, okay? And these, these are all colors that I've picked ahead of time, so don't get hung up in, in that. Okay? Border's not thick enough. You can see it, it's there, but it's, bar it's barely visible. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bigger. Let's make it three pixels and see what that looks like. Now now you can kind of see it, you know. But it's not really annoying or, or anything like that, so it's still still pretty good. Okay? All right, so next is let's do this banner, okay? So this banner image, if we look at my at my ex example, the banner image is is just kind of centered. It doesn't quite cover the entire screen, um, it's, and it's centered in there. So I currently have that in as an image tag in my HTML, so I can just scroll down here to the image. But I kind of want to put that as a background on the div instead, okay? So even though I have my image here, I don't really want to fool around with trying to, to size and shape an image. I'm just going to make the div a specific size, and then I'm going to put the, the image as a background on the div. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, and put a class tag on my banner div, and then I'm going to get rid of the image tag. And then over here in my CSS, I'm going to address the banner, and I'm going to give it width of, um, let's call it, let's say 85%. I'm going to give it a height of 150 pixels, okay? 
And then um, I'm going to do a background image. The background image is, is going to be a, a URL. Now here I need a relative URL for the background image. Okay, and it needs to be relative to the CSS file. Okay, so if we look here, I can see this is this. I'm in here in the CSS file. My banner image is this one, banner.png. So I can highlight that and say copy relative path. And then here it single quotes. Okay, I get a I get a um, a path there, but I don't want this whole week five school thing. So I'm just going to say from the CSS go up one directory, and then to images, and then to banner.png. Okay? So the, the dot dot here means traverse up up one level in your directory, and then and then slash images, so up one level, then down into the images folder. Okay? So if I did that right, I should have now a, a background image there. Okay? <coughs> There's a couple of problems here. One is that it looks like the image is repeating right to left, okay? And it also looks like it's repeating here a little bit. You can kind of see it started to repeat there, okay? So that is the, the background size, okay? So what I want to do there is I want to use the, I want to set the cover, uh, L, the, I want to set the background size to be cover, which is basically going to get, this is currently repeating, this is currently background repeat, right? So I want to get rid of the repeat and just say, give me one image and make it cover the whole div. Okay, so if I come back to my image here and I say background size and I just put cover, okay, then that's got it. Now it's zoomed in a little bit. My the image is being scaled a tad, you know, but I'm I'm cool with it. I can live with that. Okay, but also notice that in my example, um, I need to center it. Okay. It's so in my currently it's all it's justified all the way to the left, which is the default on the div. But in my example, it's centered. Okay, so how do I center? Just set the margin on the banner. So I can set the. We can do a little test here. So I can say on the heading, I can scroll down here to banner. I can highlight that by clicking on it in my in my elements tab, and then over here I can say, what if I put margin um, auto on this? And sure enough, it's going to center. Okay. I also need a little separation. If you look at my example, there's a little separation in between the heading. So that looks like that could be padding or margin. So I'm just going to do, say, say here I'm going to put, instead of doing a single margin, I'm just going to say, give me, um, give me 20 pixels on the top and the bottom and give me auto on the right and the left. Okay. So I'm using a shorthand there. I could have said margin dash top 20, margin dash bottom 20, margin dash right auto, margin dash, dash left auto. But I'm using the shorthand when I provide three values. It says give me 20 and 20 pixels on the top and the bottom, and give me auto on the right and the left. Okay, so that so that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, but now I need to get that into my CSS because I've just done it in in the dev panels. Okay, so here on the banner, I'm going to say margin. 20 pixels auto. Okay. And so now if I go back and refresh, it's exactly how I had. So I just hit command R to refresh there. Okay. All right, so my banner's done. All right, we're making good progress. We've got how long do we have left? About 30 minutes. Okay. We should be able to get this done. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is take my 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 two school information, my school panels here. So I've got these repeating panels, starts with the drop-down box. Okay, has the title, has the has an image, has a table, has an ordered list. Here's a drop-down box, has an image, there's a title, the image, a table, and an ordered list. Okay, so I go back and look at my at my HTML. I can see that I've got a content section here, which which is the div, and if I highlight that, this is a long section. I can see that it's going all the way to the bottom of of this element. It's that content section is containing both of those school panels. Okay? And then coming after that I have my contact form. Okay, so which side, inside each school panel I have here, a, I have left myself a comment here, this is school box one, and if I scroll down I can see it goes to the end and I can see my, my, ordered, my ordered list here and I have my table and there's an image so I can see that it, it's going to here and I've left myself a comment where that ends for school box two. Okay? So 
the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to want to apply some similar style to each of the tabs, to each of those panels. Okay? So the right panel and the, and the left panel are going to have the same style. Okay? So if we look at my example, notice that they have a different image and they have different content, but visually they are the same. They have the same background, they have the same centering, the images are the same size, the drop-down boxes look the same. Okay? Both of the order lists ha are look the same and have the border. So I'm going to, so I'm just, I just need to apply a class to each of those panels, the same class, and then I can apply the same style to both of them at the same time. Does that make sense? All right. All right. So first things first is let's put the class name in and let's get them to appear side by side. Okay. Step one. So, so the first thing I want to happen is I want for for this panel here for Baylor University panel and the University of Texas panel to be side by side. So I just want to take this University of Texas panel and I want to move it up so that it's right here. Okay. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, I'm just going to put a class equals content on this. I don't know if I'll use that. And then here in my school box, I'm going to say class equals school dash panel. Okay. And then I'll scroll down to the second one. And here I'm going to say class equals school dash. Okay. So now whatever in, whatever style I apply to school dash panel class should automatically attach to both of those elements. Okay. School dash panels. First thing is to put them side by side, which is display inline block. Okay. And let's go ahead just for grins. Well, let's see what that looks like. So if I run that, notice they're side by side. Okay, but I'm noticing also right away here. I notice that that this they're not lining up at the top, right? So this 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 drop down box is not lined up with this drop down box. And if you look at my example, they're lined up perfectly at the top. Okay. So what do you think is the issue there? Something in this panel is bigger, right, than something in this panel because they're aligned at the bottom. So and I'll give you a tip, it's the picture. If we if we do an inspection on the on the on the on the picture, we'll see that it's showing that it's 259 by 135. So it's um, um, 259 by 135. And if we do an inspection here on this one, we see that it is 246 by 111. Okay, so the the Baylor image is just taller. The, the, the UT image is 111 pixels tall, and the Baylor image was, um, was something else, was 131. So there's just an extra 20 pixels in that Baylor image, which means I'm going to have to size those down somehow. Okay? All right, so we keep going. So first, so we know that they're side by side. Now I want to go ahead and center them. Okay? So we can fool around with how do I center those. Let's see. So I could say, make the school panel. I could. What happens if I just apply a margin auto here? Okay, nothing. Okay, well that doesn't help. What happens if I say, um, content here on content up above? If I do margin auto, that does nothing. Okay, so that's not going to help me. What if I make this less width? I say, make it seventy-five percent. Okay. All right, that doesn't do anything either. Okay, so nothing seems to be moving those those tabs around. I made the content smaller, but nothing seems to be changing those. What if I were to come in here and just say um, on my content section, if I do a text align center, oh, that's got it. Okay, so but now my width is off, so because I messed the width up there, so I get rid of that width. Okay, so now by, by doing a text align on the wrapper, so I've got those two school panels are inside a div, that have, so they're child, children to a div that only contains those two panels. So I can center those, but then I'm also going to want to put a little space in here in between those, in between these panels. If we go back to my example, so there's a little space in there. They've got a nice border on them. Okay, all right, so first things first, let's get the text align center into our... Um, into our, our CSS. So that's the content tab, which if we look at the HTML, see it's up here. Okay, the content div is a wrapper around the two school panels. Okay. Content, I'm just going to do text align 
center. Okay. Then on my school panel, let's go ahead and put a border on that. And let's do um, the border should be uh, the borders in here somewhere in my notes somewhere. It's three pixels solid, and it is uh, the same color as the header border, which is which is um, which is this one. Okay. So that's going to give me the border. So I save that, come back to my panel, refresh, okay? And they're centered and I've got a border, okay? So now let's, let's, do the, um, let's do some separation in between these, okay? Which the simplest thing to do there is just on the school panel, I'm just going to put some padding. I'm just going to put padding all around of 20 pixels. Let's we'll see what it looks like, okay? Nothing. Padding, 20 pixels. School panel, did I misspell it? So that is, um, uh, let's go ahead and fool around with it and see what, why, we got padding in there, but it's, oh, that's right. Why did that, why did that not put space in between the, the boxes? Because I used the wrong element, right? See, this is me making a mistake in the middle of class. So I used the wrong element. So why did, why didn't, why didn't it move when I, the boxes got a little bigger, but there's no space in between them. The reason there's no space in between the elements is that padding is inside the element. So padding is going to be inside the border, and I want space outside the border. All right? So that should be margin instead of padding. Okay, so I save that, and now I've got space in between. Okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and make these images. The reason that the boxes aren't lining up at the top is because the images are, are different sizes. So I'm going to use my same uh, background image that I did on the um, on the um, on the on the banner. Okay. So here I'm just going to say I'm. Let me get an image here and say I'm just going to make them both the same size as this Baylor image. Okay. So that Baylor image is 234 by 131. I can get that by highlighting in my in my um, in my elements panel over the name of the of the image, and then I can see that. It shows a little preview of the image and says it's 234 by 131. Okay, so I'm just going to make my image box 235 by 130. That's and I'm just going to make them both the same size, and then I'm going to put a background image on either one. Okay, now that one's going to require me to to do a little a little more um, HTML decoration. So I'm going to say this is my left panel. Um, let's call this school-logo, and here on my panel I'm going to add a decoration here of left, or a class of left, okay? And then on the bottom one, on the, sec on the second one, I'm going to say this is the right panel, and on my logo here I'm going to add the class of school logo, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the image, the image uh, tag or element that's inside each of those. And here I'm going to say, on my, I'm going to say I want the school logo. I want the school logos to be width of what did I say? Two thirty-five. Two thirty-five by one thirty. Two thirty-five pixels. And I want the height to be one hundred and thirty pixels. Okay. Now I want a background image on those. Okay. So if I refresh that. Notice my boxes are my panels are now the same size, okay. But I've lost my my picture, okay. Because I've got a div in here. If we if we if we um, if we do an inspection there, we'll see that I've got a div. So here's an inspect. I see I've got my school logo div, okay. But it's it's there's nothing in it, right? It's taking up space, but there's nothing in it, okay. So let's go ahead and put the background image. Now I want a different background image. On each one of those logos, okay. So here I'm going to say on the right, which is the Baylor, on the right for the school logo, okay. So that's a compound one. So I want any container that has both of those elements, okay. Then I want my background image to be URL 
single quotes slash up one level the same way as we did the background image here right okay up one level slash images slash baylor.gif okay I'm just going to copy that and on the left one my school logo I can use uh, that one is called um, ut austin dot gif dot png okay so I can save that now let's go back and refresh and my images are back okay oh but I have them on the wrong side I put them backwards so this is actually uh, left is Baylor duh, and right is ut okay all right there we go okay I also notice my pages is updating automatically because I have the the the, 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 um, the debug tools open. Okay, it should be centered in there, right? So why is it why is it not centering? I've got some looks like I've got a little margin on that div. Okay, so here instead of so how do we fix that? So if I come to my my school logo div and I just say come in here and say if I think I just need a margin auto on it. Yeah, so that, that's going to center it right in, okay? So that's in my dev tool, so obviously if I refresh, that's going to go away, okay? So I just added it there. Oh, look at that. Did you see what happened right there? That's a, that's a nice feature. Did you, did you guys notice what just happened? It, added, it automatically added to my CSS tab because of the way I added it. It did. So, so let's take it out here, okay? So I've taken it out of my... Of my um, uh, of my school logo, so it's out of my CSS. Okay, so now we can see that the that the that the, the school logo tab is it's got margin on the right side. I want the margin to be evenly distributed. So I come down here, and because I'm I'm adding it into I'm I have my dev tools open, and I have a, and I'm using a file URL. Okay, this doesn't work if I'm using an HTTP URL. But if, if I'm using a file URL here, I can pick the right CSS selector. So I want both school logos. I'm going to say margin auto. Okay. So now my we can see that that the margin is now evenly distributed on the right and the left. And when I go back to my CSS, it's automatically added it in there. So that's a nice little feature. Okay. All right. So um, let's keep going. So um, let's style this the selection box. If we look at um, my example, the selection box is a little bigger. Looks like it's 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 this one's kind of puny and small, so we're going to make it a little bigger. Um, we're going to do that by giving it a width, and then it's got a maybe a slightly bigger font, and then we're going to put a little padding inside the input so that there's so that the, the there's a little space in between the words um, and the edge of the box. Okay, so let's just start working on that. So how do we address that? What's this, what's my selector for that? So that's school panel and select box. Okay. So if I say here, school panel select. So now any select element that's in my select box. Okay. And um, we can say what I want that to be is I want to increase the font size. So give me a font size. Of um, let's make it 18 pixels. Give me a um, uh, give me a padding of maybe eight pixels on that. Okay. So when we go back to my page, notice that my box has gotten bigger. Okay. And it's the font is bigger, and it's and they're kind of uniform size there. Okay. So. So that's looking pretty good. I want let me put a little space, you know, in between. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look here. My my border is actually is actually outside the um, is actually outside the select box. Let me see. Do I have that? Ah, look at that. So I don't have a I don't have a proper parent container to make that happen. All right, we'll come back to that. I don't know if we'll have time to fix that today. Okay. So 
Um, so my select box there. Let me. So I've got padding inside the the, the box here. Let me just put a little margin on. Um, let me put a little margin on that. Let me put 10 pixels on the top and and do the top and the bottom and do right. Okay, so just auto. So now I'm centered, but I've got a little space in between here and below here. Okay, that's enough for that. Okay, so now let's style the the title here. So in my um, in my example, the title is bold. Okay, so we can just make it bold. I come back and find our selector. So what we have there is we have a label. Okay, I'm probably going to want to label this a little bit because label is a pretty generic. Um, is a pretty generic name. So I'm going to go ahead and give each of those. Um, I have other. See, I have other labels in there. So I don't want to style every label in my in my panel. So I need to address. I need to address this div. What did I call it? What's the title? That's a terrible name. Let's call it school-name. Okay. Making sure to save my H my HTML. Okay. And then here I can come in and say any school panel that has school-name. Um, make my font weight. Uh, bold. Now let's go ahead and make the font just a little bigger. Font size. Let's just make that 1.1 em, just slightly bigger than the default. Okay. All right. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. Let's put a little gap. Let's put a little space. This this picture has some white space on it. This one doesn't. So let's put a little space in between those, a little bit. So I can come in here and I can just say, give me some. Uh, let's just do a little padding on that. So give me padding on the top and the bottom of eight pixels. Um, let's just do padding dash top. I don't really want any on the right or the left. Eight pixels. Padding bottom, eight pixels. Okay. So now I've got a little space in between there. Okay. Now after my image, I want to put a little space at the end of my image. Okay. So let's go ahead into my school logo. So we've got margin auto there. So let's just put a little padding on the bottom. Okay, let's just do another eight pixels. Okay, so now I have a little space in between here. So you see how I'm just kind of working through them from top to bottom, just kind of picking up each one as I go. Okay, let's look at my example on the table. Let's see the table has a border around it, and it's got the the header row is, has a highlight, and there's no internal there's no internal um, uh, borders or anything like that. So there's a border around the table. There's a border around the the header row, and then the header row has a background. Okay, so let's work on that. Okay, first things first is let's put the border around the table. Okay, so that table, so how do we select that? So I've only got one table, right, in each school panel. So I can just do a school panel table selector. School panel table, okay. Let me give it a border. Let's see, and the border is going to be two pixels solid, and it has the same color as the as the the other borders. Okay, which is this one. Okay, save that. Okay, so it's there. My table's a little wide. Okay, in my example, I've got a little gap here. Okay, so I can just do that by adjusting the width of the table. Okay, so I'm just going to say width, and I'm just going to make it just slightly narrower, 95 width, 95. Okay, so now it's there, but it needs to be centered. Margin auto. Okay, and I'm in. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now let's give the the the. Let's make the border, let's make the background a different color of the of the header row. Okay. So here I can say school panel table. And if we look at my decoration, I've got TH here. Okay, so I can address this as TH. Okay, so in my table, on my table headers, give it a background color. 
The background color is um, B1, B1, B1. Okay. Oh, that is not the one. It was some other color. It was kind of a bluish color, wasn't it? Let me consult my notes here real quick. Heading. So that's just the heading color up here. So I want this this one. Okay. There we go. Okay. But I've got this little gap in here where is and that's not on my that's not on my example, right? Okay. So anybody have a guess as to what that what what element that is? What attribute that is? How would I figure how would I figure that out? If I don't know how to get rid of that gap, what would I say? CSS, no space between TDs. I go to Google, okay? So I've got cell spacing, it says there's some a link here. Here's a stack overflow column, space between D, Y, and how can I remove it? That seems like a good place to start. So long story short, I've got cell spacing. Here's, whoops. So when, you, when I'm reading Stack Overflow, I'm, I'm, I might scan over the question really quick, but the question is wrong, right? Because somebody had a problem, so they put in their, their work in the question that's incorrect. So I don't really want to study the question too much, right? Because it's incorrect. What I want to look at are the answers. So in this case, they're talking about using attributes, cell spacing, cell padding. I don't really, I want to use CSS, so here's one border collapse, okay? And they even have a JS Fiddle example. So if I said, okay, CSS for border collapse, I could go to W3 schools and I could find that, that property here and I could read about it a little bit so that I can understand what I'm doing. But at a minimum, if I just do border collapse collapse, I should get rid of the blank spaces, okay? So here on the table, border collapse collapse, okay? I want to go back to my school information page and refresh my the space in between there is gone. Okay. All right. This it's a little big here, right? It's kind of taking up too much space. So if I come in here and say, what if I were to what if I were to make that in my table? What if I were to make that if I can play around with it here and for say font size and make that 0.8 em okay so now that's a little smaller okay so it kind of lines up there okay and done notice i did that in my in my display in my my dev tools rather in chrome so now when i come back to my css we see that it should be uh, it should be there no it's not there ah so now it stopped updating automatically. Okay, so in the panel, so I can just say font size 0.8 em. Okay. All right. So now that's good. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going. So let's put a little space um, at the end of the table. So I've got margin here on the top and the bottom. So let's just do um, two pixels on the top, um, two pixels on the top, auto on the right. Let me do ten pixels on the bottom. And auto on the left. Okay, so now I'm using a different shorthand on the margin, which we start at the top and we go clockwise around. So that's two pixels on the top, auto on the right, ten pixels on the bottom, auto on the left. Okay, that's ten pixels is is pretty good up there. Okay, so we've got a little space there. We've got a little space here at the bottom. Okay, now let's go ahead and change this. If I look at my example, um, I've got a border around my around my ordered list here and I've changed the Roman numerals. Okay, so let's get a border around this list. So if we look at my ordered list here, it is right here, OL. I want a border around the whole thing though. My border in my example goes around the label at the top plus the plus the border, plus the, the, the list itself. Okay, so here I'm going to put a class on that containing element 
um, and I'm going to call this school majors. Okay, I need to put it on both. Oops, forgot the class attributes. All sorts of mistakes in this one. Okay, and then over here I can say school majors give me a border. I'm just going to do the same border as I did on the on the table. Two pixels, two pixels solid, and it's going to be forty-seven six B eight E forty-seven six B eight E. Okay. So there's my table. I'm going to make it smaller, okay, so that I have some gap in there. So we're just going to do the similar um, similar CSS as we did on the table. Width of 95%. Give me margin. Uh, let's just make it auto. Okay. And my font size looks pretty good actually there. Okay. So that's there. Let's change this to be Roman numerals. Okay. Which we do by that's going to be the list style. What's the how do I set the CSS for the list style? CSS ordered list list style. So I just Google for that and I can get the um, the link, quick link to the W3 schools. We can see I've got some quick examples here. I could scroll down and get all of the um, all of the values here that I could use: Lower Roman, Lower Latin, Upper Roman, Gregorian Hebrew. Lots of different things I could use here. So I'm just going to use list style Upper Roman. So that's going to be on my school majors. On the ordered list, I want the list style, list or list style, to be upper Roman. Okay. Go back and refresh. Okay. Now in my example, my header. Going back to my example, my header here is is a little bold, and notice I've got a. a a left justification on the table or on the list. Okay, so I need to make this. I need to make this bold and put a little space at the top. Okay, so let's do that. How are we going to do that? That's school majors label, right? So I'm trying to address this label right here. Okay, so if I just say in my school majors for the label, um, give it. Um, um, let's do say font weight is bold. Okay, make it bold. And then in my school majors, let's put a little padding in the at the top of that. Um, let's just do the same we did here on the school name. So let's just say I'm just going to copy that just for the sake of, of time. Okay, just put a little space in between there. Okay. So that's gotten bold. I got a little space. I actually want my padding here to be after the border. So I want that to be margin on the bottom because I want there to be a little space. See here at the in between the bottom of the of the list and the bottom of my school panel. So I need to put a little gap in there. So here my CSS was wrong here. I don't actually want padding bottom on school majors. What I want is some margin. Okay. So I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna use the same as I did on the table. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's got it, huh? Looks pretty good. Now I need to do a left justification on there. How does that work, do you think? Let's look at the style on that. Why do you think it's centered currently? I don't know. Let's look and find out. So if I look at school majors here, I can highlight my list. Okay, and just say, what if I were to say, if I were to put a text align to the left on that? That gives it. Okay. So that's what I want. Oops. Okay. Text align left on my school majors. Okay. All right. I think so. I think I've got it. Let's see. We have just a few minutes left. Um, 
and I don't think we'll have time to finish. So what I'm going to do is I will, um, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this uh, after class, and I will post the final um, the final version in the Google Drive folder. One thing I do want to do real quick is I want to put the gradient background um, on this tab, or on the on this panel rather. Okay, notice how we have this panel that goes from here to there, and it kind of starts in this bluish color and kind of ends in this whitish color. What was that? It's a linear gradient. So that's on the school panel. So right here on school panel, we can say background color. Okay, and I'm going to say linear gradient. Um, and you can you can look this up to see how it how it um, on on W three schools to forget if they have a really good page about gradients. Okay. So but on my gradient, what I'm going to want to do is I'm is I want to go to bottom. Okay, and then I want the and I want to now I put in the color stop. So what colors do I want it to be? And I can put in as many as I want here. Okay. I'm just going to do two, and I'm going to use um, the header color. Okay, the same color as the header. Where's my where is that type? So right here I'm going to say start here and then go to um, white, which is the background color. Okay. And that didn't work. I typed something wrong. Oh, it's here. It's um. Oh, now it's there. Oh, control R does something different on that page. Okay. Is it background image? Let's see. CSS linear gradient. See, this is the teacher making a mistake. It is background image, linear gradient direction. See, here's the here's the structure. So I have background color should be a background image. And then top to bottom is the default. Um, left to right. So you could say two right here. Um, and the, or I could say two bottom. This goes two bottom right, so see how it goes from one corner to the other corner. So my mistake was this should be background image. Thank you, Caesar. Let's see, is that it? Still not there. Two bottom, two bottom. There it is. Okay. But now my image there is a little funky. That's because this image has a transparent background, and this this image does not. Okay. Which I think is probably on my that's on my my example there. Okay. Alright, so that's all for today. I will finish this. Um, and then you'll see the final version um, on, on, uh, posted on the Google Drive folder. Um, and then this video, this lecture will be posted on YouTube, so you can look at that. But I hope that helps to kind of see the process that we go through when we're trying to solve this. So, you know, start at, start at the top, work your way through the bottom. Do little tiny pieces at once, debugging along the way. Okay? This was a lot of div tags. It is a lot of div tags. There is a lot of div tags in HTML. You're just going to have a lot of div tags. That's just, just like in C sharp or Java, you have a lot of curly braces and semicolons. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What's that? A quick question.